I think we've talked a lot about Caleb Williams. You know, I think we've talked a lot about Quinn Ewers. These are big names, and they'll be talked about plenty more. We're not done with them. But the transfer portal is such an integral part of the sport now. It's the most popular thing. When we talk about it on this show, those segments, they just do incredible numbers. What I wanted to do tonight was draw your attention to some names that are going to be factors on teams that could play for something very important down the stretch this year, and I don't think you've heard a lot about them. And the first name I wanted to bring up to you tonight is JT Daniels. JT Daniels, everyone knows about JT Daniels. Everyone knows his story in our circles. It didn't work out at USC. He transfers to Georgia. He started last year. People kind of forget that because someone other than JT ended up taking the last snap in the national title game. But JT Daniels gets hurt last year. He is never reinserted as the starter at Georgia. Well, he's out of there and he transferred to West Virginia. This story, to me, is just totally fascinating to watch no matter where he went, but it's especially fascinating because of where he went. I don't know how much you know about West Virginia right now. Neil Brown, who I knew from my time down at Troy, well, his time at Troy, my time in Columbus, so I kind of watched him down there. He's at West Virginia now. It's probably a much more sneaky good roster than people realize. There's a lot to replace in the secondary, but offensive line? I think will be a strength for them this year. That receiving core could be a strength for them this year. If JT Daniels performs at a top three or top four level in the conference, that could be good enough for West Virginia to surprise a lot of people. I think we're to the point in his career where you can throw away the recruiting hype. I think a lot of people stay married to hype attached with recruiting too long when your eyeballs have told you it's okay to just think he's a pretty good player. If JT Daniels plays pretty good for West Virginia this year, if he's the third best quarterback in the Big 12, that'll be good enough for them to do things that they haven't done so far under that staff. So that's one. Here's a name that, unless you're just diving hardcore into your preview magazines or you're a Penn State fan, you don't know a lot about, and that's Mitchell Tinsley. And this is a very important name. If you're looking up at the Big 10 right now and you're wondering, Oh, who's going to compete against Ohio State? Well, if I mention Penn State, your first reaction is, they can't score with Ohio State, can they? Well, they can if they play them at home, which they do, and Mitchell Tinsley pans out, and Sean Clifford's healthy, you know, so there are a lot of ifs in that sentence. But who did everyone focus on last year with Penn State? It was Jihad Dodson, big-time receiver. He's off to the NFL. Parker Washington is still there, and I'm high on Parker Washington. But I'm not high on Parker Washington just carrying the team by himself. I am, however, very high on Parker Washington and Mitchell Tinsley as a duo there because I know what I have in the backfield, uh, if not immediately, eventually, with Nick Singleton. A lot of young talent coming into Penn State and a lot of transfer talent. Tinsley comes to State College by way of Western Kentucky. What did he do last year, you may ask? 87 catches, 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns. Plenty good enough. Now, Western Kentucky ran a video game offense last year. But it still stands to reason this is going to be a very good player. And if he falls into that place, that little puzzle piece that, that they hope he is that fits up there, is a very similar build to Jihad Dots. And I'm not going to compare the players. But everything else works. When you get those receivers, those one-twos there, and if Singleton does pan out as early as I think he will at running back, all of a sudden Penn State, that points per game, you know, that yards per carry average in backfield, uh, yards per attempt, in the quarterback department, all of a sudden they just tick up a little bit and all of a sudden they're a little bit more a factor than you thought they'd be. Mitchell Tinsley, big time player there to watch. Now here's a big time player that all of a sudden people aren't watching anymore. Uh, Spencer Rattler, how quickly people forget. This time last year, I could not walk down a grocery store aisle and look at a college football preview magazine without that dude's face on the cover. Why? Because OU was a preseason number one and Spencer Rattler was a preseason Heisman favorite. Neither of those happened. Spoiler alert, if you've DVR'd 2021, but you haven't watched it yet. And so from Oklahoma, Spencer Rattler goes to South Carolina. This is so important for South Carolina, not just for 2022. What if he's right? I don't know that all of you have followed, you know, the the day-to-day around South Carolina, but Spencer Rattler, especially when he initially got there, he was not shy about sharing some thoughts about the comparison. Old program versus new program. Oklahoma versus South Carolina. 
And he talked about how it just feels so much more natural at South Carolina. Feels like it's a better fit. I, he, I am paraphrasing here. He said something like, I've learned more since I've been here than my entire time in Oklahoma. I think a lot of people chalk that up to sour grapes. Maybe it was. Let me give an alternate possibility. What if he was right? Or what if both are true? What if he is rubbed the wrong way by the way things went down at Oklahoma, but he's also telling the truth about the comparative analysis of the two programs? Well, that means if he is telling the truth and he delivers, he upholds his end of the bargain, maybe South Carolina has a better season this year than you expect, which will be two years in a row that they've done that under Shane Beamer. Now, if they win eight games this year, it's obviously big because they, they overcame your expectation level again. But think about what a successful 2022 will do for South Carolina moving forward. Because all of a sudden, what you get to do is you as a staff, and apparently, judging by this weekend, they don't need a whole lot of help in recruiting, but you get to take that example out on the recruiting trail, not just in high school, but also you get to become a quarterback portal player. You get to be a program that's viable because you've got a case study. You've got a proven data point. You go and you talk to whoever it is that's on the move in the portal and you say, come to South Carolina. And when opposing staffs tell you don't go there, you can't win there, just point to Spencer Rattler. It's so big for them moving forward. You know, they're trying to get a foothold. They're trying to find their recruiting niche, just like Michigan State has in East Lansing. That is going to go a long way to determining whether they can do that. I got another quarterback to throw at you. We're going to a program that I don't think we've talked about in quite a while. Jaden Delora at Arizona now, not Washington State. Now, Jaden Delora, I think if you pay attention to the award season last year, you know that he was the Pac-12 freshman of the year at Washington State. And then everything fall, fell apart at Washington State. And he's at, he's at Arizona now. Arizona was very bad last year. Arizona may not be much to write home about this year, but there are a lot of folks whispering in our industry, in the coaching industry, about Arizona. Jed Fish is the head coach there. And last year they played four quarterbacks. It takes some of your programs a decade to play that many guys. They had to play four quarterbacks last year. Uh, the hope there is that that is rectified in a big way by bringing Jaden Delore in, but also an actual talent that you can leverage at the quarterback position. Not very finesse either. There's a lot of physicality to Jaden Delore's game, but also they brought in a kid named Jacob Cowing He's a wide receiver transfer from UTEP. And I think the over-under win total for Arizona is like two and a half or something like that. So we're not talking about a team that's expected to contend for bowl eligibility. But last year, uh, 2,800 yards, 23 to 6 touchdown to interception ratio. If he performs anywhere remotely on par with that level, they're going to win many more games than people expect. And I can guarantee you at the end of the year, when someone throws out the that is the best blank win team in America. That's the best four win team or five win team in America. That Arizona team may very well be the one they're talking about. So keep an eye on him. And lastly, at Kentucky, this whole SEC East race, it's a bunch of Georgia and, and everyone wants to know, is anyone going to compete with them? Who could upset them? Well, Tavion Robinson is a very, very important player to watch. Because this time last year, everyone was excited about Wandell Robinson coming in from uh, Purdue, I believe, to Kentucky. And they had good reason to be, because he really showed out. And now he's off to the next level, and all people can ask this time of year is, well, yeah, I mean, Will Levis, the quarterback's getting a lot of hype, but who's he gonna throw to? A receiver, what was his name? Snap, 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 Wandell Robinson, he's gone. Well, that's half of it. No one ever wants to follow up with the other half. Who did they, are they just going to have nobody? Are they going to play 10 on offense? No, they went and found somebody, in fact, a couple of somebody's to replace him. Tavion Robinson is a guy who's coming in there. And I, I think when you pair him with Javon Baker, for example, that's an Alabama, I, I actually don't remember how that worked out with Baker, but I think if this works out, then all of a sudden, I know they're changing coordinators up there too, but if this works out, all of a sudden, what does it mean for Will Levis? And don't forget, Chris Rodriguez is a running back that gets overlooked because he's at Kentucky. He's on the precipice of setting a whole bunch of records up there. Guys like Benny Snell set uh, before him. So Tavion Robinson, they have hope because the new coordinator they have is from the same tree as Liam Cohen. They have hope that he can roughly fill those shoes or in the aggregate when you combine some of the transfer portal guys and the incoming freshmen that they can... They can fill the void left by Wondell Robinson. I mean, there's, there's no mystery. 
the, the ability level of the guy throwing him the ball and Will Levis, if Will Levis is going to fulfill on this immense potential, that's part of it. It's a big part of it. So those are some names to keep an eye on. We're not done with that. We're going to, I think, probably do a couple of more segments about that.